Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 54, nine tips for how to grow your audience by attending social media events. Welcome back to another episode of the Audacity to Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel J. Lewis, also known as The Ramen Noodle on Twitter and my other podcast and all of that stuff. This is the how-to podcast about podcasting and using Audacity. That is so meta, a podcast about podcasting, but it happens. It's just like bloggers blogging about blogging and, you know, Winnie the Pooh talking about Winnie the Pooh and all of that. I don't know why I thought of Winnie the Pooh, but I am excited today because this last Saturday was PodCamp Cincinnati, and I have been talking about PodCamp Cincinnati a lot for the last several weeks. And one of the reasons is because, well, I organized it. And not so much like did everything in the organization, but I saw myself more as the enabler to bringing this to our community here in the greater Cincinnati area and giving people the power to do what they do best with certain areas of responsibility and making the conference awesome. And I think it was awesome because we had a team of awesome people and a team of awesome speakers and awesome attendees. It was fantastic. And Griffin Hall, the building on Northern Kentucky University's campus for the College of Informatics, was the perfect place to have PodCamp Cincinnati. I've heard several people say best PodCamp ever, and many people say best building ever for a technology conference or social media conference. And in fact, there were uh, certain funny things that came from it, like the big wall and uh, some great stuff that we may do some more things at Griffin Hall before the next PodCamp, which Hint, hint, leave your calendar pretty open for October 2012 for PodCamp Cincinnati. Again, just just saying, not, not, you know, just saying. So this episode, I want to talk to you about how you can take advantage of things like PodCamps or Bar Camps or Word Camps or Fire Camps or S'mores Camps or whatever kind of camp you go to or any kind of social media conference that you go to ways that you can take advantage of that for growing your audience. And this applies just as much to bloggers as it does for podcasters, because we all like that feeling of having a larger audience. It's that feeling that, hey, I'm somebody, somebody's listening to me. Now, before we get into this, please remember, don't let this be about numbers. Keep this in mind that when you are podcasting or blogging, And you might see that you only have an audience of 20 or 30 people, the subscribers who regularly receive your content. And yes, that number can be discouraging. I have been there. I have been there for a very long time with certain episodes or certain podcasts that I have. And uh, in some ways, still close to that with one of the podcasts that I have. And it can be discouraging looking at that number and seeing it not change over a long time, no matter what you do, no matter how many episodes. I talked to a a fellow uh, contestant or a nominee in the podcast awards, the podcaster of behind Who Day Weekly, which is a sports podcast about Bengals, which by the way, podcast awards, the voting is still open. So please go there and vote for your favorite podcast. I suggest the audacity to podcast and technology, and I suggest Christian Meets World under religion inspiration. And my friend, now I can call him a friend because I've met him in person, Nick, has this podcast Who Day Weekly under the sports category. But I met him and he he shared an email with me saying something about how he can get discouraged seeing that he's got so many episodes released, like almost 50 episodes released, but he's a little discouraged by the subscriber numbers. I've said this before in previous episodes, but it's a good reminder that, yes, it's easy to look at those numbers and think, man, I've put out 50 episodes, I've been doing this for a year, and I only have 20, 30 subscribers, whatever your number is. But 
keep this in mind. That number represents 20 to 30 people who come back every week to hear what you have what you have to say about something. They are coming back to hear your opinions, your thoughts, your perspectives. Try and get the same 20 to 30 people together in a room every week to listen to you. That's pretty hard. But on the internet, 20 to 30 people consistently listening to you, that's great. That's, that's an audience that you have that is dependable, faithful, and they trust you in some way. So even if you have really small numbers, please don't be discouraged by that because remember, these are people who actually trust you and listen to you and are, are building relationships with you, I, I hope, and who are consistent in wanting to hear what you have to say, your unique opinion, your unique perspective. But we do still like to grow our audiences for many reasons. And especially if you have a podcast that relies on or uses content from your subscribers, then growing your audience can help your audience because that means there's more great content for the rest of your audience. Like if you're telling stories from your audience or answering questions from your audience or whatever. Uh, My friend Cliff Ravenscraft has the podcast Answer Man show. And if he didn't have an audience, there wouldn't be people asking questions So he wouldn't be able to give answers to questions that people are asking because there would be no one asking questions. So growing your audience does help a lot. Now let's look at some ways that you can grow your audience by attending social media events. I'll give you nine tips. First thing, it's kind of a tip, kind of a reminder, is make this about relationships, not just numbers. All of the tips I'm going to present to you today are related to relationships, connecting with people, not just trying to make another notch in your belt for RSS subscribers, but connecting with people. A relationship is far more beneficial to both of you in the relationship than just an extra subscriber because a relationship has potential to go a whole lot farther in life, in support, and so much more than just an extra subscriber. So make sure that this is about relationships and not just numbers or trying to bump your number, your RSS subscribers up by a few numbers. Number two, connect with others. Similar to the first one, but if you attend a social media event with the sole purpose of trying to grow your audience, then you're not going to find too much success there. But if, you, if you're trying to do that, then you're going to come off as like self-promoting or just, hey, everybody, I'm here because I'm awesome and that's why you should come listen to me. No, you don't want to be that kind of person at a social media event. Go there to try and connect with other people, not for your own benefit, but just to connect, to create and build those relationships with others. This can help you so much more than just another number to add to your RSS subscribers. And if you are involved in local social media enough, then you probably already have certain circles of friends that you might like to hang out with. But this might sound kind of mean, but try not to hang out with your already friends or your circles that you already have at these social media events. Try to broaden your circles. Hang out with people you don't know. Make new friends. Meet new people. That's what it is about, to connect with other people. Otherwise, you could just stay home and listen to downloads later or watch the live stream or just watch Twitter and not participate, not connect. But it's great to be there, to connect with people face to face. So connect with others. So number one, it's about relationships, not numbers. Number two, connect with others. Number three, listen and learn. Social media events present a lot of information, especially something like a PodCamp, where at PodCamp Cincinnati, we had more than 30 sessions. I think the actual number was like 36 sessions throughout the day 
that's a lot of information. And no matter how much you know, there's always something out there that you don't know. And it's very likely that someone else at the conference will share something that you don't know, a new resource, a new idea, a new method. Maybe it's an old method. Maybe it's an illustration of something you'd heard about, but had for some reason discounted and decided not to pursue that. But now that you see them working with it, you might think, wow, this is great. I want to work with this. And that happened with me in, at PodCamp Cincinnati. I was presenting a session on WordPress plugins for bloggers and podcasters. And someone was there who knows a whole lot about WordPress and podcasting. And later he told me, man, I loved this particular program, this particular plugin that you mentioned. I'm going to start using that on my site right away. And I was kind of, I was impressed that, uh, he was able to gain something from my presentation. And the same thing, I sat in on some other people's presentations where I I knew the content well enough, but yet I learned something more. Or I got to hear an idea again, which made me reconsider it and realize the possibilities. So as you are listening and learning, you will probably hear new ways that you can grow your audience while you're at a social media event. So just from the information that the speakers are sharing, you'll find new ways to grow your audience or new strategies and anything like that. So number three, listen and learn. Number four, join the conversation. Many of these social media conferences, or it really should be all of them, have an official hashtag. That would be something that you use on Twitter where it's the pound sign or for everyone in the UK, Alan, it is the... And uh, well, there are others in UK, but it's the the hash sign, and then it's a word. We call that on Twitter. That's called a hashtag, and you can follow the hashtag with programs or websites like TweetChat.com. I love TweetChat for this because it auto refreshes quite quickly, and then you can reply and you can tweet, and it automatically adds the hashtag that you're following to your tweets or replies. It's a great way to follow an online conversation. So when you go to these events. Join that conversation. If there's an official hashtag, follow it, participate in it. And then after the event, use a site like followblast.com and you can find everyone who is tweeting with that hashtag and follow them, connect with them. Or you can also connect with them as you see them tweeting through tweet chat. Or maybe the conference has some kind of public list of attendees. Like for PodCamp Cincinnati, We had an official Twitter list from PodCamp Cincy on Twitter of attendees and presenters. So everyone could immediately see a whole list of who all was there and presenting and attending. As well as, since we used Eventbrite for the registration, the Twitter addresses were linked from there too. So people could go and check that out. So if there's something like that, look into it and see about following people and connecting with them. Thank them for meeting them and thank them for presenting or just mention to them, hey, I saw that you were there. Sorry, we didn't get to meet up, but uh, what did you, what was your favorite thing? Join the conversation, but don't approach this from a spamming perspective of, hey, everybody, if you like this, then you'll also like this. There's a place for that, yes, but don't try to spam people. Just join the conversation, be a part of it, and people will build those relationships with you and connections will lead to growing your audience. So number one, it's about relationships, not numbers. Number two, connect with others. Number three, listen and learn. Number four, join the conversation. And number five, present a session. Many of these social media conferences are bar camp style unconferences. That would be things like pod camps, word camps, bar camps, and all of this other stuff. The the way that an unconference works or a bar camp style unconference is where anyone can present a session. And I love this because then it's no longer about the people, the speakers. It's about the content of the sessions. It's not like, hey, come hear this person present. It's, hey, come hear this great content that you're going to receive while at this conference. 
So if you are passionate about something, or if you know, if you're knowledgeable in a certain area or, or skilled, then why don't you share that? Give a presentation if you can. I know not all so- social media conferences are open to presentations, but if they are, consider presenting a session. Your session could be on anything, but when you present and you are giving, I'm going to come back to that point in a moment, but when you are giving like this, people will follow you, they'll tweet about you, especially if your presentation contains your information, like your Twitter address or your uh, your profile links or your website at links, people will check it out because hopefully they'll be impressed by your presentation. They'll appreciate what you share with them. And if you tell them, check out your website, they will probably check out your website because here's a room full of people who are listening to you. Yeah, they're doing other things on their computer at the same time and maybe chatting with people and following the Twitter conversation and all of that. But they are there to listen to you. So tell them where to go to connect with you. And that might build your audience a bit more because they'll see that they liked what you presented and so they check out what else you do. Number six, be enthusiastic, not shy. Chris Brogan gave us a great video message for the opening session of PodCamp Cincinnati. And in there, he challenged everyone that there's no shyness allowed at PodCamp. And he said, if you're shy, you're going to miss out. You, there's, you won't gain anything by being shy. And that is so true because if, if you're just shy sitting in a corner, you're not going to connect with people. And people might not connect with you if you're being shy and standoffish. So be enthusiastic. Be passionate with people. Enthusiasm is contagious. I, sh- I shared this with the PodCamp Cincinnati speakers. I challenged them, please, Be enthusiastic, be passionate, because passion and enthusiasm are far more contagious than information. So if I just share information with you, you might not actually catch on, you might not reshare it, but if I'm passionate about it and enthusiastic, enthusiasm breeds enthusiasm. So be enthusiastic when you connect with people, whether it be you're presenting a session or just one-on-one in the hallways. Make an impression on people that you are someone who is positive and passionate about things. They will remember you better this way, and they will be interested in your other passions. So be enthusiastic, not shy. Number one, it's about relationships, not numbers. Number two, connect with others. Number three, listen and learn. Number four, join the conversation. Number five, present a session. Number six, be enthusiastic, not shy. Number seven, bring blog or podcast cards or any kind of thing that you can give out to others. If you can bring something, well, face-to-face communication is great. Connecting with people on Twitter is great. But how else can people remember you? It's very great It's very handy for them if they can hold something in their hands that when they pull it out of their pockets or their bags later on, it will remind them of you. So bring business cards or what I'll let you in on something that I'm working on is, and if you're interested in this, let me know, a a new service that I'll be working on for designing podcast cards or business cards for people that it's Well, it's not like a business card advertising your business and name and all of that, but it's advertising your podcast. And I would recommend have something like this for every one of your podcasts. And it would be very easy for me to do this for you if you already hire me to do your podcast cover art, because that way I can just incorporate the exact same branding into a card. This isn't, well, that's a commercial, but this whole episode is not a commercial for that. But if you are interested in that, I haven't figured out a price point yet for this, but please let me know. Uh, You can email daniel at djosephdesign.com and we can work out something there for getting some cards for you. But do not be that person who the first thing you do when you meet people is hand them your business card. Because here's, here's a perspective from, let me tell you what I would feel 
if you come up to me and the first thing or one of the first things that you do is you hand me your business card. I think at first, well, they don't really care about this business card. They don't really care about making an association or a connection with me or a relationship. They just want to give me their business card. It's it's almost kind of like spam, just giving it before people ask for it or before there's even any kind of connection or relationship made. But you might have business cards, blog cards, podcast cards, stickers, flyers, whatever it is. Try and make it a point to not give these out right away. Connect with someone first before them you hand them anything. And in fact, wait to see if they ask you for something or if you get on the topic because your connections and conversations with people should not be all about you. People don't like talking about you. They like talking about themselves. And I know you like talking about yourself. I like talking about myself. But try and make this about the people you meet. Ask them for their card. Ask them if they have a website address or a Twitter account or a podcast or a blog or anything like that. And ask them questions. If they give you a card, don't just stick it in your pocket, but maybe write something on it. Look at the card, read it, maybe ask them questions about it interact with them. And then perhaps they'll ask you for your card. Or if they don't, then you could say, well, here, let me give you my card too. Or let me tell you about uh, this podcast I host. Then there's already a relationship. You've already expressed interest in them. And then you're sharing what you think they might be interested in. If you have a bunch of different podcasts and then therefore have a bunch of different podcast cards, then maybe you could just pick a particular one that you think this person would be interested in. This is why I love the idea of having a part, a card for each podcast. If you have a network of podcasts, then yeah, you could have a network card, but that's kind of very broad and general for people. But if you have a specific card, then you could say, oh, hey, you like this topic. I happen to have a podcast about that. Here, here's the card that will remind you how to get to my podcast. So that way, They can connect with you. It makes it easier for them to remember you after they leave. See, business cards, marketing pieces, and all of that at a social media event should be for follow-up, not for introductions. So start by trying to build that relationship and then give them something that they can take to remember you by. Engage with them first. And then make sure they have something that will remind them who you are and how to connect with you later. That's number seven. Bring business cards, blog cards, podcast cards, something like that that you can give them. Number eight, be a giver, not a taker. Make it your goal to give as much as you can, whether it be ideas or connecting people with each other, or maybe it's information that you're presenting in a session, or supporting other people by listening to their sessions, or just listening to their ideas. Maybe you're giving passion. Maybe you're giving candy. We, we did that at PodCamp Cincinnati since it's close to Halloween. Someone in the planning group had this great idea of, hey, let's encourage the speakers to bring candy that they can hand out to their audience. I think people at the end of the day might have been a little sick of some of the candy or filled up on it, but still, it was a lot of fun. I, I did a little cute little thing with a uh, hundred grand. I told someone that whoever listed the their favorite WordPress plugin, I would give a hundred grand, and I did. I tossed it to them when a little nice little yummy hundred grand candy bar. Now I have a bunch left that have been giving me headaches. But give to people. Don't just be there to take. Be there to give. The more you give, the more people will know what you have, and they'll most likely come back for more. See, if I just go out there and I say to people, hey, I'm an audacity expert. Hey, I know all about podcasting. Hey, I'm a WordPress guru. Hey, I'm a web designer. Hey, I can do this. Hey, I can do that. I'm just telling you what I have and what I can do. But my purpose in starting this podcast, the Audacity Podcast, is giving 
stuff, giving you information. And many people that have done similar things want to give information. Sure, we have, each of us have certain marketing strategies and all of that with our podcasts and such, but be a giver in everything and make it your goal to give as much as you can. And the thing that I found that's really awesome about social media is that when you give, people generally aren't taking advantage of you in a wrong way. By giving to them, they get to see your expertise. You're giving them proof of your expertise. So if you have a podcast about um, knitting and you release this information for free and you're giving all this information, people will see you as the expert because it's suddenly, wow, they, they really know their stuff. You are demonstrating to people your knowledge and you're sharing it with them. And that's when I first started the Audacity to podcast, I was amazed at how people were coming to me, asking me to do stuff for them that I was telling them how they could do it themselves. Did you follow that? It's, I'm giving them the free information, telling them how they can do it, but they want to hire me to do it. And I'm fine with that. And if you, if you feel that same way and want to hire me to do something for you, that's great. I would love to do something for you. But that's not my primary purpose. My primary purpose here is to give information. So when you go to a social media event, be a giver. Don't be there just to take, 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 take for yourself and be a selfish social media person or more like a selfish antisocial person. Be a giver. Give to others who are there. Give of your passion, your time, your energy, and people will appreciate that. And they'll know more what you have to offer and they'll likely come back for more. So number one, it's about relationships, not numbers. That really needs a verb at the beginning of it. Number two, connect with others. Number three, listen and learn. Number four, join the conversation. Number five, present a session. Number six, be enthusiastic, not shy. Number seven, bring blog or podcast cards or something that people can remember you by. Number eight, be a giver, not a taker. And number nine, follow up on new relationships. If you go to these events You've most likely collected a lot of business cards. You've followed a lot of people on Twitter. You've connected with a lot of people in a lot of ways. But don't let it end there. Follow up with them in some way. Send them an email. Send them a tweet or something. Just maybe thank them for coming out to hear your session if you presented a session. Or thank them for the great conversation you had. Or just say, hey, I'm so glad that we got to meet I am thrilled to connect with you. And and in your follow-up with them, this is an opportunity that you could, again, mention what you have to offer. Do not approach this as spam or in a spam-like way, spammy way. But do this in a genuine, honest way. Thank them, genuinely thank them for the conversation or whatever it is that they gave to you. And you can mention, by the way, I want to make sure that you knew that I offer this, or by the way, I have this podcast that you might like, or I forgot to tell you about this while we were together. Or you can mention these things and not be spammy about it. Because first of all, you have some level of relationship with that person that you're emailing. You're not just telling them, hey, get my new podcast on blah, blah, blah. You, they, they'll get the email and say, oh, yeah, Bob. I remember Bob. I just met him this weekend. He was a pretty cool guy. Hey, look, Bob has a podcast. That's right. Bob mentioned that he has this podcast. I'm going to check this out right now. I want to see what Bob is up to with this podcast because when he said it, that sounded really interesting, but I kind of forgot about what it was. So thank you, Bob, for reminding me about your podcast. I'm going to go check it out right now. That's generally how people will feel if you follow up and are genuinely personal with them. So follow up on these new relationships. So again, this list of nine tips for how to grow your audience by attending social media events. That's a long title. Number one, 
Uh, remember, it's about relationships, not numbers. There, I put that verb in there. Number two, connect with others. Number three, listen and learn. Number four, join the conversation. Number five, present a session. Number six, be enthusiastic, not shy. Number seven, bring blog cards, podcast cards, business cards, stickers, something to hand out. Number eight, be a giver, not a taker. And number nine, follow up on new relationships. So keep these things in mind as you have attended or will be attending social media events in ways that you can possibly grow your audience. And it really goes back to that point number one. And that's why I made it. The first point is it's about relationships, not numbers. If you make it about relationships, let me tell you, relationships are so much more powerful than numbers. If you have a relationship of trust with people, then if you get to a point where you decide you want to start promoting a product or an affiliate link or something, if you tell people, go check this out, sign up for it, I'll get, uh, it'll help me out financially, but it's also a service I genuinely recommend. People will trust your opinion and they will more likely do that. It was so much better. And the, the, Extreme marketers will tell you it is so much better to have a following of a hundred people who trust you and who will do what you say than to have a following of thousands of people who listen passively and don't participate or react or provide feedback or anything like that. I know it's still nice to have a bigger number, but that's what this is about because by building relationships, yes, that can help your number. But make it about relationships rather than about numbers. So what kind of tips do you have that you've experienced or have heard from other people about ways that you can connect with people or ultimately grow your audience by attending social media events? Or what did you think about these ideas? Do you have any experience that you want to share? Anything that you want to add to this list or anything you want to disagree with on this list, I would love to hear from you. You can email your feedback, either written or audio, to feedback at noodle.mx or call in to 859-353-4332. If you send an audio message, either through the voicemail or the email address, please keep it to fewer than three minutes. You can also comment on the show notes and get this list of suggestions and a couple links too over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 54. Now, since PodCamp Cincinnati was this last week, and I want to tell you a little bit about it and some of the awesome things that happened now that I've gotten the main content of this episode out of the way. PodCamp Cincinnati was totally awesome, and I'm not... uh, I'm not trying to boast on myself because I, I was just the, the visionary of this and the, and the enabler of this. It's really the community that rallied around this idea and supported and took action that made this happen and made this awesome. There were so many awesome people at PodCamp. In fact, I would say there were 115 awesome people at PodCamp. You know why? Because that's how many people attended. (laughs) Actually, I think it was a little bit more. But we had some incredible content at PodCamp, some incredible people, some incredible relationships built. I met so many people there, but I wish I could have met them all. I didn't get to meet all of them. I tried to, but just didn't get to connect with everyone that was there. For me as an organizer, I'll be honest, it was a physically draining, emotionally draining, and I was tired. When PodCamp was over, I went home, got ready for bed, went straight to bed early, a couple hours early, and slept for 11 hours. Completely missed church the next day, but I uh, I think God knows that I needed the rest. It was fun, though. I don't want you to think like it was a burden for me. It was a ton of fun to organize this and be a part of it. And to see all of the content, I never got to sit in on any person's entire session. 
I wanted to rotate around, make sure everything was working okay for everyone, that everyone's needs were fulfilled. Even though I had a team, an excellent team of volunteers helping all of the speakers get set, I still wanted to make sure uh, that everything was working. Just let them know that uh, we're there for them and everything. And also, I wanted to hear some of this content. There was so much great content. And I didn't get to hear all of anyone's session except my own, which I presented about WordPress plugins for bloggers and podcasters. But I'm so glad that we tried to record every single session and we'll be posting those sessions online this week and next week over at podcampcincinnati.com where you can go, just click on the sessions option in the menu and then it will take you to the schedule where you can see how things were scheduled throughout the day. Click on any session, and then you'll be able to download that session or watch the session, view the slideshow uh, from the session, whatever. There was so much fabulous content. Let me just give you an idea of the stuff that we had. Cliff Ravenscraft presented a Q&A session about podcasting where he just essentially introduced himself. And by the way, Cliff uh, also sponsored PodCamp Cincinnati and huge thanks to Cliff for pod- sponsoring PodCamp Cincinnati. But he presented a session just asking for questions on podcasting and had some excellent questions from people who wanted to know about how to start a podcast, how to get better at a podcast. Dave Jackson from near Cleveland, Ohio, from schoolofpodcasting.com, presented a session about making money from your podcast. And he said, don't wait for your sponsor. And he shared some great ideas about how to make money with your podcast. But moving away from the podcasting perspective of things, there were people there talking about Paul Clifford presented a session about how he doubled his Twitter followers in 30 days and not spam followers. He was talking about genuine, real followers. And there were people there talking about how to how to market your business with social media, grow your business with social media. Michelle Hummel from Web Media Expert presented a session on that. Judy Kettler presented a session about telling your story in social media. And I love some of the tweets I was seeing coming, all of the tweets really, that I was seeing coming from this. Podsensi was a Twitter hashtag. And people were saying things, uh, repeating what they heard from sessions. And something great I heard from Judy Kettler's session was that we're not content creators. We're story sharers, storytellers. And approach social media that way, not just creating content, but telling stories. Because people relate with stories, not just content, but stories. And so much great information there. There was stuff about starting into video if you're a podcaster or some of the ways that you can get great video from cheap equipment. There were sessions about someone presented an impromptu session about music and social media and someone else presented a session about uh, tips for uh, an, um, an impromptu session for tips for improving your podcast audio. There were even a couple dramas there. One of them was a kind of impromptu uh, drama where the presenter, the name of the drama was Hey College Grad, and the presenter had scripts and he said, these are the roles that I need filled. And there were four there, uh, four different roles that he needed filled. And people were just so enthusiastic to volunteer for the parts. And man, there was so much enthusiasm in that room and people were hilarious with it too. It was a very short session though. But it did illustrate very well how uh, a college grad can use social media or better use social media to get a job after college. And there were uh, sessions also about about LinkedIn and networking. And someone presented about a session about social media and agriculture and niche topics, social media and real estate. It was awesome content and awesome speakers, awesome attendees, an awesome team of people helping to organize it. And I was so grateful to Northern Kentucky University College of Informatics for hosting us there. I'm so grateful to Cliff Ravenscraft from Podcast Answer Man for sponsoring us as a platinum sponsor. I'm grateful to Griffin Technology for uh, sponsoring us by sending us a bunch of awesome prizes that we gave away. And people really enjoyed the prizes and it was just 
incredible event. I wish you could have been there if you weren't there. I wish you could have been there. I will be doing this again next year in October 2012, probably. Still looking at date, and I would love to have it again at Griffin Hall uh, at College of Informatics because the building itself, just awesome for this. Classrooms were large and spacious. Many of the classrooms had outlets for almost all of the chairs, which everyone there loved because they could charge their devices. The main auditorium, which was called a digitorium because it was so digital, was awesome because every seat did have its own outlet. And they had this gigantic digital screen that were were like a bunch of small LED screens all connected together. And the total resolution was almost 6,000 pixels wide. The screen was absolutely gorgeous, and and during uh, after one of the short sessions, a lot of people just stayed in the digitorium and started tweeting with the hashtag, and we put up tweet chat on the wall, and it was affectionately known then as the big wall, and so you can search for the hashtag of uh, pound sign big wall, one word, and you'll see some of those tweets, and it was hilarious, and we might do something, I'm, I'm thinking about having a tweet up there like a a, someone comes and presents something about twitter and we have the tweet chat on the wall behind while we're eating appetizers or something i don't know we'll pull something together there but awesome place i really wish you could have come and i really hope you can come next year too i know that some people like uh, one of the listeners to this podcast fred castaneda really wanted to try and be there he was going to come up from texas to be there and instead, he, he couldn't make it because of another um, business agreement uh, or business obligation that he had. But he still, he sent money to support the event. He sent a recorder to support the event. And he was a friend of PodCamp uh, contributor and sponsor. And he participated in some of the conversation and ideas. So even these things, even if you can't make it to these kinds of events in person, doesn't mean you can't participate we're going to have a couple sessions that are downloadable, like Fred Castaneda recorded a session that about podcasting, and it's going to be available on the website very soon. Brian Monahan uh, from the Cincinnati area, a great social media guy, had submitted a session but then had to withdraw because of other obligations. But he gave us his screen recording, and we're going to post it on the website. And many people were watching the hashtag from wherever they were, And maybe next year we can even live stream some of the sessions from some of the rooms so you'll be able to watch and participate in PodCamp Cincinnati from wherever you are. So watch for these social media events and participate in them. Go to make relationships and to listen and learn from others. Not just try and grow your numbers, but connect with others. Let me give you that list again of nine tips for how to grow your audience by attending social media events. Number one, remember, it's about relationships, not numbers. Number two, connect with others. Number three, listen and learn. Number four, join the conversation. Number five, present a session. Number six, be enthusiastic, not shy. Number seven, bring blog cards, podcast cards, business cards, something to give people to remember you by. Number eight, be a giver, not a taker. And number nine, follow up on new relationships. So what did you think? What's your experience been either at PodCamp Cincinnati or at any kind of other social media event, ways that you can better connect with people and ultimately grow your audience through relationships that you get at social media events? What did you think about this list of ideas? Do you have anything to add to it or subtract from it? Email me, feedback at noodle.mx, or call into 859-353-4332, or leave a comment on the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 54. And like I mentioned earlier, the blog cards and podcast cards idea, this is a new service I'm going to offer And if you are interested in this, please let me know. You can contact me directly at daniel at djosephdesign.com. Or another way you could do it is go to podcastcoverart.com and you can see my portfolio, growing portfolio there of podcast cover art. 
and you can request some podcast cover art for yourself or for your podcast, or maybe I've already done the cover art for you. You can also request through that form. Go ahead, even though it says podcast cover art request form, go ahead and request if you want blog cards or podcast cards through that. And I am a freelance web designer. So if you would like help with your website, maybe even just setting up WordPress for you and using a default theme, or maybe you want something styled a little bit better, a customized header, or maybe you want a full-fledged site design for yourself, or this new thing that I'm doing, I'm, I'm really excited about this, is called responsive web design. And that's a technical term that what it means is making a website that's mobile-friendly without having to use extra plugins or all of this stuff. And check out podcampcincinnati.com on your mobile phone or just visit podcampcincinnati.com and take your browser window and make it thin and make it wide, thin and wide, thin and wide, and you'll see how the website responds to the size of your browser. And that's something new I'm going to start doing with web design clients, if they would like to request that extra service, is making their website mobile friendly without extra plugins, without making a separate site or anything. And it it's fun for me as a web designer. And I know people truly appreciate it. And at PodCamp Cincinnati, they loved it because they could check out the schedule and see what was going on. And we had Jennifer Mitchell, who is NKY Jennifer on Twitter updating that schedule and doing a fantastic job of following up with the speakers and keeping track of the sessions. And it was a mobile-friendly website, which people loved being able to check that. So if you need any web design help or website help or WordPress help or podcasting help or anything like that, please let me know. Email me directly, daniel at djosephdesign.com or check out the website podcastcoverart.com or djosephdesign.com. Com. And I would really appreciate it. And I would love to help you look better. I like to say in my business, you have a message that deserves to look great. And that's what I love to do is make your message look or sound great. Now, the podcast awards are still going on. So I would love it if you would go and vote for the podcast that I have in the podcast awards. That is the Audacity to Podcast under Technology and Christian Meets World under Religion Inspiration. And also check out the other podcasts there. You can vote every day until October 27. So I'd greatly appreciate it if you would go there and vote. And let me know uh, what you felt from or thought of this content that I shared in this episode. Again, feedback information is feedback at noodle.mx or call 859-353-4332 or leave a comment in the show notes at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 54. Please follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash the ramen noodle. Now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go podcast with passion organization, and dialogue. Make sure that you're subscribed at the site, theaudacitypodcast.com, including the email newsletter. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. Thank you for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of the Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our podcasts over at Noodle. Dot MX podcasts like clean comedy, Christian movie, movie reviews with critical thinking, Christian worldview, and more to come. No, seriously, more to come, especially now that PodCamp Cincinnati is over. There is more coming. Check it out at noodle.mx. And the Audacity to Podcast is also a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. So check it out at pod at what is it? Tech Podcasts. Dot com. That's techpodcasts.com.